Part 2 On the Move Day 1 Derbyshire to Edinburgh Our first leg was along the M1 and our first big stop was Leeds. It had taken a few hours. The weather had not actually been too bad. I mean, it wasn't a nice sunny day but at least it wasn't freezing or chucking it down. And I did almost lose some luggage on the motorway. After getting to Sports Bike Shop we got some much needed straps for luggage and oh yes and a back protector for my new jacket. I'm sure I got more things that I totally didn't need. I mean necessary supplies that were value for money and essential to the trip. Wink wink. Next it was time for a decent nosh up and after seeing a really interesting Mexican restaurant on the channel rate my takeaway with Danny. It had really stayed in my mind and I took the opportunity just to tick that box. It had now become more like a very late lunch, arriving just after two. But what a fantastic place to eat. And I think Paulie was actually quite happy with the food. And when we realised it was almost four o'clock, but that we'd only covered 75 miles, we had over 200 miles still to go. Well, we got a wiggle on to our next stop. As we approached our next stop, Billingham, after 90 odd miles, and almost two hours later, we needed a break. So we dropped in to say hello to Pete English. He'd been a long time follower on, on my Instagram and he was genuinely a very nice guy. Very fun and friendly. So we took the opportunity to meet him in person. Where we met up and we had a little tea break. It started to get cold on the way up. So it was much needed and a fantastic cuppa. Much welcome and got some warmth back into me. After talking bikes and having a little chat, we got on and focused on our next step, Edinburgh. It was three hours away, according to Google, and over 150 miles. It was near 6pm and we had only managed half our distance for the day. More like me had put us into a bit of a situation with all my stops and slow speed, and it was now time to get serious and blast out those distances. We got a serious wiggle on. The weather got colder and darker. As soon as we crossed over the border, it actually started to rain. Welcome to Scotland then. Sometime after crossing the border, streetlights became scarce. And then disaster struck. My main light stopped working. To actually say I was livid would be an understatement. I had just been spectacularly charged £150 for changing a light bulb by the garage. And I had provided the light bulb. I had tried to do it, but on a new bike I had no clue and I just needed it done. I said nothing. I mean, what can you say? At least now the age-old question had now been answered. How many mechanics does it take to change a light bulb? Two of them, and all day, and it's 150 quid. And I'm the one I had to pay to find out. It's terrible. Now, the light had actually just stopped working in the middle of nowhere and it was raining. Pitch black and I wasn't happy about getting my white snake playlist disturbed. We fiddled around with it and nothing happened. It was getting the shades of Cornwall breakdown again. I was feeling cold, tired and hungry and we had to get somewhere safer to further investigate to find out what happened. I got out the spare light and started following poorly. A few miles down and the road hit a bit of a nasty pothole and the light came back on. I could not believe it. I was worried that the bulb had fused. I counted my lucky stars and kept on praying until we arrived in Edinburgh that there would be no more issues. Edinburgh. <coughs> it was still raining by the time we arrived in Edinburgh and I was just so tired. I think Paulie was exhausted too, but he just didn't say a word. We arrived at the pub we were staying and dumped our stuff in the room. I had desperately wanted to grab a pie and a pint and order a meal, but we were late and the kitchen was closed. But I had made a, made a decision earlier that would change our evening. I had really taken a disliking to my new new Geoferma bag. Oh, it had just been a pain to get on right and a constant worry. Moreover, after the two fails this morning, I felt everything was just too top heavy. 
and I really wanted something that would lower the weight. And it played in my mind the whole trip, to such a point that I started to search Facebook and Gumtree to find a Givy pannier that I could fit there and then. I'd made a call to someone selling a Givy pannier in Edinburgh and I'd got an address by the time I got to Leeds. It made an eager dash, finally hoping to put an end to the stress of a potential luggage veil falling off the bike. We finally found the flat. To cut a long story short, the pannier that had been advertised was not the same ones being sold. The types of clips were different and so would not fit onto my frame. I was gutted and mightily annoyed that I'd left some viable options on the way. But well, such is life, hey ho. Onwards and upwards. I profusely apologised poorly for making a pig's ear almost an hour of our precious time. I could see that he was flagging and frankly I was knackered too. But I was sure that a night visit to Edinburgh Castle was going to be pretty spectacular. It was honestly amazing to see the city transform so much and the icing on the cake was the castle. It was a real stamp on the book to say that we were here, we made it. After a nice ride around the area, we got ourselves back near midnight, if not after. It was time for a well-deserved rest and to think of the next day. It was really going to be a long one. End of day one. <laughs>